um, to our next speaker, who I'm really pleased to introduce because she's a, a colleague that works with me in Gloucestershire. Um, so Dr. Claire Kingswood is going to be talking about the co-diagnosis model in Gloucestershire. Thanks, Claire. Hi. Um, so I will share my screen. It's being a bit of a pain because I've got a double screen on. So I'm just going to. Oh, that's what. Can everyone see that? Not yet, Claire. We. No, we can just no. see you. <laughs> just see me as usual. Let's try it again. There we go. It's there. Working. Brilliant. Yeah, it's there, Claire. Thank you. So I'll just change it to. Is that coming up now, full screen? Yep, it's there. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Yes. Great. So, hi, I'm Claire. I'm a, a GP in Nailsworth. Um, I've also I've got a bit of a kind of personal and professional interest in dementia. I, when I was in medical school, I, I cared for both my grandparents with dementia. One had Alzheimer's and one had vascular dementia. So, got to experience what it's like from the other side, which kind of sparked my interest in it. Um, and then in my GP training, I was lucky enough to be uh, to work with Martin Ansel in the um, memory assessment service who um, it's hard not to be inspired by Martin. So he's, I always say I was Martin um, <laughs> and he set this all off. And then for the past year and a half, maybe now, I, uh, I got a fellowship for a year working a day a week, trying to improve um, dementia diagnosis in primary care. And that's how this has all gone. And now I'm just still doing it because I can't stop now. Um, so these are some slides I used um, when I spoke at the, the Alzheimer's Society conference, so they're a little bit um, slightly not irrelevant, but um, taken a bit from that. But what we were kind of looking at with this side is, as someone touched on before, you know, we all have to kind of use each other here. It's not down to one single kind of profession or team. And the more we work together, the better the better this is. And that's what this whole co-diagnosis thing was built on. So we kind of um, originally, obviously, the waiting time for MAS has been uh, quite long and it's got longer as it shut down with COVID. I think at its worst in the forest, it was about 26 week wait to be seen uh, with the memory assessment service. Um, and we have to ask our question, the question of does everybody need to go to the memory assessment service? It's um, it, it is there for those people who are a bit complex, where it's not straightforward or early onset. And we want to free that service up for the people who need that extra kind of in-depth input um, and assessment. What we were trying to work at, and we've been told in general practice, we need to diagnose more, we need to do it, we need to be more familiar with it. But actually, as GPs, because it all did used to go to MAS, we're not skilled, you know, not everyone is skilled or feels confident to do that. People still have this fear of it's such a, you know, a huge uh, diagnosis for a patient. They won't want it coming from me. They'll want it coming from a specialist. Um, there's also sadly still the mentality of what's the point? It's not going to change anything. So there's a lot of work around us doing that. And in an attempt to kind of help with that, we've set up this co-diagnosis primary care MDT where GPs or other, and like we often work actually with other healthcare professionals. I can see some on the call today um, to uh, diagnose, and it's a kind of supportive um, way that we can do it within primary care, and it supports and hopefully upskills and and teaches at the same time. So it started this this link that we noticed obviously between dementia and frailty. So our frailty matrons, frailty nurses, were obviously going into people's homes, talking to people, and realizing that there were these memory problems. And giving them the kind of um, skill set and confidence to start actually taking that that step further and doing that six sit and asking family what they thought and then bringing it. It started with this kind of rough model and there was a, a, a brilliant model of this going on in the South Cots at the moment, which has been up and running for a while, which works very well with the frailty um, matrons and nurses down in the South Cots who have just taken to this like it's just been amazing what they do now. And so the, the MDT consists of a consultant DD, uh, CDN, someone like Steve or Peter Fitzpatrick or someone uh, with a lot of expertise. Um, there's usually a GP with an interest like myself on there. Um, frailty matrons, nurses come along. GPs can bring cases. Um, we've got um, just, you know, older person visiting leads, that kind of thing. Complex care at home. 
anyone who feels that they're involved with a patient and and can can bring this case can come and present basically so they come to the meeting what we look generally looking for at this point um, is that they have a high kind of clinical suspicion of of that this person has a diagnosis of dementia so usually we, we well we always ask them for a six sit score um if possible and um, you know, if it's if that's indicating a significant cognitive impairment and you've got a history from both patient, family, carers, that type of thing, and memory bloods are normal, that's usually the baseline information that we ask them to bring. We don't ask for a CT head usually at this point because in some cases it's just a not necessary and being inappropriate. And it has been a barrier, I think, to some people getting a diagnosis. Um, because they don't want to put people through that or it would be traumatic. Um, so we, we don't ask for that as a straight off. So they come, they'll present their case um, and we um, often discuss it and say what we think. So at that point, either a diag diagnosis can be made and we will subtype that as well from down there, with, whether it's Alzheimer's vascular mixed, etc talk about whether medication is appropriate or not. Um, so usually they get a gauge for whether a patient will be interested in medication if it was appropriate at that point. We often ask for people to come with a kind of pulse check and a list of their comorbidity so we know um, whether it's um, appropriate to use or, or which type. Um, another possible outcome is that we actually say, do you know what, there's more to this. It's a bit more complex that these, you know, this does need um, memory assessment. Um, so that becomes an onward referral. Or we say, actually, this, you know, might be MCI or um, we need more information. There might be a mental health element. There might be anxiety. So we will advise on that kind of input. And sometimes we do say, do you know what, in this case, a CT scan would be really helpful and ask that they um, get that and then bring it back to the next MDT. If we do diagnose the, the clinician that's brought the case will feed back the outcome, uh, that goes in various different ways. In the South Cots, the frailty matrons felt that the, eventually they were able to do that themselves. Um, where I'm also doing it a bit in Stroud, um, that will sometimes go back to either the frailty nurse who brings it or sometimes the named GP will then be informed and will give that feedback. We are doing another pilot, a formal pilot in the Forest of Dean at the moment where we have an extra CDN on board. So she is getting involved in sometimes if we need a bit of extra information, she'll go and do a bit more of an assessment and, and then she would go and feed that back as well after coming to the MDT. And then obviously we don't want anyone to get less of a service coming to us and not through MAS. So they will all get um, uh, the post-diagnostic follow-up with a CDN um, or a dementia advisor as they would normally if they'd have gone through the memory assessment service. So they shouldn't get anything less coming to us. So how are we doing this? We're trying to utilise all these allied healthcare professionals. So like I've said, you know, we've got some band six CDNs involved, frailty matrons, nurses, complex care at home, GPs, the care home leads for GPs. Um, that, that can be really helpful because there's often a lot of people who everyone thinks has dementia, but they don't actually have a diagnosis. We've touched on many reasons why that's important, but some of the, you know, there's a lot of work going on in secondary care at the moment. So if they have, if they do have to go into hospital, they get minimised bed moves and priorities and things like that. So it, you know, it is important even for those patients who aren't going to have medication. Um, and then we're working, we're doing this on a PDSA cycle at the moment with our pilot. So we're trying to tweak it and make it a bit better. And that's, in, you know, we've uh, brought in kind of SBAR so people are presenting in a kind of clear and concise way. Sometimes they want a pro forma, so we develop one if people wanted to use it, but they don't have to. Um, some initial inclusion exclusion criteria just to make that more clear about what cases are appropriate. But actually we're saying, do you know what, if you just want to bring them and discuss it, we can signpost about what's most appropriate anyways. Um, and then we're working with, you know, Arden's templates. It's the tech side is surprisingly complex at getting access across, you know, um, to different surgeries, um, system one and everyone being some people being on EMIS and that type of thing. So that's a, a work in progress. But hopefully where we'd like to take it um, if this goes, uh, you know, all the way with time. And we don't need to do all of this, but like we said, this is a bit about how we how we work that up. Um, and then the, there's a lot on GCare. If, if people look at that, it's been updated recently. And I think there is a link directly if you are in the Forest of Dean to our MDT. So you can, um, with the meeting link to come through to that, we do it twice a, twice a month. And also there is a new... Um, 
uh, on synapsis now there is the old age psychiatry advice so um, that, that's really useful so people can you can it's not an instant call back but you can submit and, and, and ask for advice on there which is which is um, hopefully going to be helpful particularly if people want to know about or query about medication or things like that if they're unsure so lots of support out there if people want to use it um so that is a quick whistle stop tour of what we're doing i'll try and stop sharing my screen now if i can uh, do it um so get yeah, lots of positive things going on um and we're trying to kind of our dream is to take this across gloucestershire um but we obviously we're working on the pilot now so we can prove um prove that it's good and it's useful and um hopefully then be able to take it take it across gloucestershire thank you Thank you so much, Claire. That's great. A great summary of, of the great work that's been going on across Gloucestershire, uh, both in the so South Cots, uh, Stroud and Barking Vale locality, and obviously the pilot site of the Forest of Dean. So, so thank you. And there's a couple of 